dedication to our students. So uh, on to our next presenter. I just want to introduce Vince. He's the CEO of Credenda Virtual High School and College. So Vince, you are up. I have that um, unfortunate uh, disability that once you get to a certain age, you have to take your glasses and put them on top of your head because you can't see the screen here. So, uh, First of all, thank you for inviting uh, myself to be able to speak here, and um, I really look forward to this. You know, over the last uh, two days, I really, um, I hope that you folks have been as encouraged as I have been about what's happening across the province. We have absolutely some amazing things happening. When you think about uh, technology and where it's coming, where it's where it's going. Um, I remember, uh, you know, back in the day, back uh, in the 90s, uh, when we were we were still using satellite uh, to get our internet, um, and then all of a sudden we were, you know, we were going to get a DSL connection, and wow, that was fantastic. We were excited. We had these little boxes sitting in our in our schools, and you know, routing things, and then. Then finally, we were starting to talk about we were going to get high-speed internet, and um, and then now we're talking fiber, and that's exciting from the standpoint of what's happening in education, but I still think that we have a long ways to go. I, I you know, I think that we've got to we really have to push things a little bit harder here. I think, um, and our challenge, and it was funny because I wrote up my little uh, description of what I was going to speak on, and. Some of the organizers call, uh, had a quick conference call with me to say, Vince, uh, you need to tone it down a little bit. But, because I want to say a few things here in particular about our funding issues. Our funding issues are absolutely atrocious. And folks, I'm going to tell you that if you're from a First Nations community, I hope you're listening and I hope you take this message back to the chief and council. Because the reality is, unless we get on the bandwagon and start really making a, uh, a noise, we are going to be totally messed up in terms of what's happening with the funding pieces. Um, when you think about what's happening, I was part of the broadband initiative that was in northern Saskatchewan with PAGC and MLTC and, and SASTEL. And we, you know, we were able to get that high speed into each of those communities and what, that was exciting. We were thinking great, uh, great opportunities coming. Um, but everything is contingent on the funding piece. And that's why I entitled this session Connectivity issues plus funding issues equals lower student achievement. Well, the reason I say that, and it sounds rather maybe negative to even talk this way, in particular in light of um, all the positives we were hearing about, you know, the, the health initiatives, and, and that, that's absolutely fantastic. I, I'm just utterly amazed. I mean, and just this morning, one of our, our instructors is now uh, living in uh, Namibia in southern Africa for the next four months working on a project there with Namcol. And uh, she was having a help desk issue, and I just went out, to the, out here in the hallway, and I logged onto her computer, and I fixed her up, and she's good to go, and she's back. Everything's good and, and working well. So yes, technology is working. But the reality is, is that with all the stuff that's going on with community net in terms of in terms of the paying and KCDC happened to kind of walk away from that because and I sit on the KCDC board and what a challenge that has been to get the funding to be consistent on a regular basis it's been a non-stop fight year after year after year imagine how many of our staff that within KCDC also having to brace themselves for a layoff notice just before you know the first of March, because we don't have any funding pr being promised for April one, and all this stuff that's been happening on just that front. So you take that and combine that with the funding component that we're having, and I'm telling you that the reality is the result will be if we don't get this thing fixed and addressed, our student achievement levels will start to decline. We've been on the increase for the past years because we've had some things going forward. But I'm telling you, with the reality of what's happening in this particular government, it is absolutely just terrible. Now, we do have an opportunity at this time with Anna Fontaine, who is our new RDG in Saskatchewan, who is an educator from Manitoba. She's got the right heart. But the unfortunate reality is, is that she's getting her marching orders from Ottawa. 
And unless we start to really to make a lot of noise about this issue at Ottawa level, and I'm going to encourage you that you need to start embracing and engaging with your MPs. This is a piece that when we've been talking about with, uh, I, was, I was actually approached recently by a couple of First Nations leaders that said they have just started to talk to the MPs. And I'm saying it better start happening more. The reason why is the MPs are actually the ones that are going back to Ottawa, taking the message, they're saying, we have got to address this funding. They want to get elected, so we have to get into their face and actually say it's time we start doing things here. Now, you might think I'm coming across a little hostile and a little <laughs> angry. That may be a bit of my Mohawk nature here, and I'm tired of this. The reality is, is that we've been fighting this battle, it seems like, for a long time, but we're, and we're getting great success. The reality is, is that we started an initiative like Credenda Virtual High School in 2005. In 2005, we started out of PAGC because we wanted to address the, the math and science issues. We wanted to address how we were, had a deficiency in the northern communities with getting expert qualified individuals to come and live in those communities and work there. So we started up a virtual high school with math and sciences and we've gone great. Now we can actually deliver this online and live contacts and things are really starting to move along. And so when you think about it, and I want you to think about this, these numbers. In the past nine years, Credenda has been able to offer over 4,900 classes to 4,900 different individuals in nine years. Now think about how many opportunities people have been able to receive in terms of getting math, science credits that they wouldn't have been able naturally to get in a community. Now it's not all been roses, it's not all been perfect. We've had connectivity issues over the years, there's been challenges. We still have some of those issues. But the fact of the matter is, we started to get some success. Aboriginal Affairs came on board and said, you know what, we'll fund you. They've invested currently, to date, into Credenda Virtual High School, over the not last nine years, they've invested almost $15 million. And the news last week that we received from Aboriginal Affairs that went to out to every First Nation in Saskatchewan, they didn't even have the audacity to tell us and write us a letter. They wrote us a letter back last June saying maybe there was going to be something coming down the pipe. But instead what they did is they sent out a whole little uh, binder to all the First Nations saying here's what's going to happen in terms of all the funding. They notified everybody that no longer, uh, Credenda Virtual High School will no longer be funded as of September 2014. No more funding. You know what they decided to do was they said here's what's going to happen. You want, you want the Credenda Virtual High School courses? You have to pay for them yourselves, but guess what? You don't get any more money. So Here's, the, here's what's the reality is what's coming down the pipe for us. They take $1.5 million that we've been funded over the last, every year for the last so many years. They decide that they're not going to fund us. Not only do that, do they do that, but they do what, have you been watching the news in terms of the NCBR funding? 65% of our NCBR funding being cut at each of the, the local levels. A program such as James Smith Training Initiative that's been incredibly successful, closing the doors June 30th this year because they lost 500 and some thousand dollars in their NCB funding. Little Pine, $600,000 in NCB funding. All these different First Nations all across Canada losing their NCB funding. Early, early intervention child program funding, all gone. They've gone so far to even say, guess what, those of you that are at your school levels and teachers, we don't have to pay your teachers the same level as the STF or AT or any of these. You simply will get whatever you get. That's it. Too bad. Because you're not a member of the STF, you don't have to get paid at the same level. So you may be a neighboring teacher in the, from, from one community. You're a teacher. You got the same education, same experience, but we don't have to pay you that. So, so they're starting to cut all these different programs, but oh, but by the way, we're going to give you in 2016, we're going to give you $1.2 billion. $1.2 billion, we'll give you that 400,000 or 400 million over each of those three years. Where do you, and then uh, Minister Valcor announces yesterday in a letter that came out to everybody saying, that's all new money. Really? It's called a shell game. You know, it's going to be new money because what they've done is they've taken the NCB dollars that they've set aside, they've taken our dollars, they've taken the AFN dollars, the FSIN dollars, the early, early intervention dollars, they put them into a pot of money, set it aside, they won't use it this next year, but in 2016 they'll give you new dollars. You see what I'm saying? These are not new dollars. They're just reprofiled dollars. It's a shell game. 
And we, have, we sit back and we go, oh, well, what do we do? Do we sit back and idly take it? Do we accept this? Because the reality is, as a chief said to me out in Toronto, he said, the internet is our new gold, G-O-L-D. It's our new gold. If we don't get connected as First Nations on the, with technology and the internet, we are hooped. The, Chief Bear gets up here and talks about the infrastructure is absolutely critical. He's absolutely right. But we can't do it without having the internet connectivity. We have to have the, that connectivity. We will never have the success with the health initiatives if we don't have the connectivity. We need these type of things to be paid for. And Aboriginal Affairs simply is taking the approach, well, you know what, I guess too bad. We, if we, I just don't understand it. I don't understand how and why they can get away with this. Now, I know, so, I probably, you guys okay with this, what I'm saying? I mean, I'm, I hope I'm not getting you all worked up here, but the reality is, I'm glad you stayed. But I, I knew when I got here, I was going to speak and be the last speaker, and I thought, oh, this is going to be terrible. But I know that Casey DC gives some great gifts at the end, and so a lot of you guys stayed here for the draw, so thank you for staying. So one of the things that we've been involved with, it, the Aboriginal Affairs did create an initiative that said, hey, we're going to, we want to see what we can do. All right, great. We'll talk about what we can do about some of the things in terms of funding. So we've put together a national learning group. So here's what's going to happen. I'll just give, kind of give you a heads up. The, the, the message that came down from Aboriginal Affairs is that e, uh, virtual schools, e-learning schools will no longer be funded. That doesn't just mean us in Saskatchewan. It means Manitoba. It also means Alberta as well, too, and another project in, in Ontario. So it's not just us. We're all going to be being hit with this one. Bottom line is, though, that needs to happen is that we need, a funding, we need a funding formula. So we did some calculating as a group recently to determine what is it that our schools need for, uh, in terms of funding for, the, for technology and for e-learning. We think that there needs to be a separation. We don't want, to be, we don't want there to be any confusion as to there's e-learning as one pot of money and then, uh, or e-learning and technology all in one pot. We want two things to be, the two things to be separate. So we've recommended that they take your nominal role, K to 12, and they actually calculate, based upon what the needs are for your students, that they pay a technology fee for each one of your kids uh, based on your nominal role. So we're suggesting from K to 12 that you actually have a nominal role, uh, you get a fee of $400 per student. Now multiply 400 by your nominal role. If you've got 300 students in that school, what's that work out to? Come on, 120,000. Do you think you could live on 120,000 a year for technology budget? That's just technology we've been proposing. You see, the reason why we think that we put forward a funding formula for Ab Aboriginal Affairs is because they love formulas. They'll, and, and, and they're starting to consider it. But if I'm the only one at the Ottawa and headquarters actually saying this, they'll just throw me out the door and say, too bad, you said it, thanks. But every one of you need to be coming forward with the same message, is what we're saying. You need to, every one of us needs to demand this. We need at least a minimum of $400 per student for a technology budget. What is that going to take and provide for? That'll provide for your computers, this can provide for your technology internet connections, can provide for some of the other hardware, some software issues. I think, and then also the personnel that's going to be able to help support that initiative in your school. 120,000 in a school of 300, you could probably live off of that with your technology budget, but we need to set a standard. Why do we say that it needs to be setting a standard? Let me tell you the reason why, that in the United States of America right now, they started the whole internet high school kind of scenario about the same time as Canada has, and in the United States, approximately, the numbers currently that are coming out of the states are saying that approximately 23 to 25 percent of the students are all using e-learning as their basic means of, uh, of getting an education. In, in Canada, we have stayed approximately about 5 percent across Canada for the last nine years in e-learning. We haven't grown. And the only reason why I believe we haven't grown is we haven't got the funding. 
We're still in, dealing with archaic mentality in the, out in headquarters that says, what? You're, what you, you can do education online? You, you can actually do something very similar to what, you know, think about what we saw from the doctor. I was saying to Clint and some of these guys as well, I would sooner have one of those things scan in my hand to find out if I've got a rash on my hand than have go into a doctor's office, I think, and have them guess without even the mi microscope. That's very cool technology. We're promoting that kind of stuff and thinking that's fantastic. Well, what about our education? It shouldn't be any different. We need to get our kids prepared for the 21st century. We need to be promoting it. I still face day after day people going, I don't know how to use email. Teachers, I don't know how to check my email. Can you just mail that to me? Can you just fax it to me? Seriously? Like, when are we going to get on board? And if we can... If we continue with that mentality and promoting that, why would we get any more funding if we're not going to embrace the technology? So we've got to get on board here in terms of how it could benefit our communities and our students. So the bottom line is there is an initiative that's being put forward. So $400 for K-12 to per student based on your nominal role is what was being put, being put forward by this committee. In addition to that, we're putting forward that a base of 500 to 700 be provided for any student between grade 7 to 12. So if you're between grade 7 to 12, they would provide an additional five to $700 per student, and that would be targeted e-learning uh, dollars, strictly for e-learning to pay for those courses. We believe that that would be a very workable solution for those e-learning initiatives, but the reality is, it's, we need to have those dollars. So as we are currently facing right now, with the news of last week that they're not going to fund Credenda Virtual High School, we are now in the process of saying, well, if there's no funding and they want the bands to pay for it, when the bands are getting less money, there's no way that we as a charitable organization are going to come to the bands and say, you need to pay for this, because that's not the way we operate. So. Bearing in mind that we will not go back to the bands and ask for the money because you can't, you can't afford it. We understand that. The reality is that we have to take and say, well, maybe we need to start preparing ourselves for closing the doors. And so on the high school side, we're actually making those steps forward. We're going to say we have to either come up with a different plan. We met yesterday with the, uh, the Ministry of Education on Saskatchewan side. They don't want to see us go. They want to see us continue to go forward. So maybe there's an opportunity for us to move into that domain and actually work something out and work other funding uh, possibilities out of there. Or we have, to, we have to shut the operation down. And it would be a shame. It would be a shame that we'd have to shut it down. We still have the college and the training initiative, which is going strong, and we'd have to either separate that out and having some talks with SIT and see maybe we can do some partnering. But there's, up, there's ways we need to partner together, work together, and collaborate. And so um, that's, that's where we are in the world of e-learning in terms of our challenges. And, but I, I, once again, I want to really highlight First Nations folks, people who represent our First Nations folks, please get, go home and really, really get the message through to our chiefs and councils and to our, so they can speak to our MPs and so forth. We have got to really address this matter at a national level. The people, like I said, at the region are only simply just telling us what they've been told to tell us. They're not the enemy. We need to deal with the people in Ottawa. So that's, I was going to have a bunch of slides and I decided just to wing it. So maybe, any questions? question, but I do have a couple of comments. 